Welcome to another mini video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer. I'll be playing around with the outer glow effect as well as the outer shadow. I will be using circles, the pen tool, gradients, the effects, mainly the outer glow, a little bit of the outer shadow to show you how to quickly and easily enhance your illustrations. I start with an empty artboard. One thing most people don't know is that the artboard is a vector object. Like most others, it can be converted to curves, it can be given a different shape and it can be given a fill. It just does not take a stroke. So I'm giving my artboard the background colors, a gradient from dark to a slightly lighter color. I want it to be a little bit toxic, so I go with the green to a purple with a little of blue in between. In order for the glow to be visible, I want to create a dark background. I don't want to go completely black. That's kind of boring. The gradient with some clouds I prepared earlier, they are simple vector shapes with a Gaussian blur and transparency. I changed the colors. I don't want to go with the black I want to match. So I'm going with a dark green and a dark purple for my clouds. After all that fiddling around with the background, it's time to finally create something that the tutorial is about. I start with a circle. No surprise there. I like to work with shapes wherever I can. I duplicate the circle. This will be my body and the eye. The eye gets a yellowish color. And then I go in with gradients, a linear gradient for the eye going to white and a radial gradient for the body going from a lighter blue to purple to black. Adding a third color, especially if it's not a direct mix between the first and the last color, adds a little bit more visual interest and depth. I convert both circles into curves that allows me to deform them with the node tool. Especially for the eye, the shape is of great importance. It defines how the character is perceived. We perceive big round eyes as cute, while more pointy angle shapes are seen as aggressive. I use the pen tool and a simple stroke for the legs. I give it a black stroke and slightly thicker width to be visible. I make sure that the stroke scales with the object. I duplicate the leg to create three legs on one side then duplicate those three over flip them horizontally and adjust them. The shape of the eye will be the base for my wings. Instead of a fill, they will have a stroke and I'll give it a light blue. I'm trying to match the color to the colors I used in the body, trying not to leave the color spectrum too much and stay within the purple, black and bluish tones. Using the pen tool I add some detail, just straight lines that give the idea of a pattern. I use the gradient tool with the context set to stroke to color the lines of the wing. I duplicate the wing, flip it, place it below the other objects in the layer stack so it's behind the body. I adjust the stroke as it was scaled along with the object. Now this is the plane design. If I put the glow effect that I'm aiming for on top, 
you can see the difference. It's finally time to add the effects. I select the eyes and click on the little icon at the bottom of the layer panel. This brings up the window with all the effects. There is a different sorting from version 1 of Vintage Designer to version 2. They are in reverse order in the new version to match how they are being stacked. The two effects of interest for this video are the outer glow and the outer shadow. I adjusted the color from the default white to yellow and increase the radius. The outer shadow comes with a default blend mode of multiply to shade things down, but I can set it to screen as well. That way I get a double glow. I choose a bluish tone and increase the radius, make it really wide. I also up the intensity and as you can see, it is not yet visible. I need to increase the radius even further. One thing with Fin Designer, once you reach the max in the slider bar, you can still add a different value in the field behind it. I increase that to 150. Once I turn the outer glow back on, you can see there are now two effects. The wider bluish glow behind the smaller yellow glow. I want the body to glow as well, but I'm not quite happy with the outer glow as it is an even glow all around the shape. The outer shadow on the other hand offers the offset and an angle to move the shadow away from the object, which is exactly what I need for the glow. I'm setting the blend mode to screen, give it the light blue and increase the offset that way the shadow or in this case the glow moves then i reverse the angle and i should have moved that ui right from the start now you can actually see what i've been working on and i could see what i was working on now i have a drop shadow creating a glow just on top of the body Next up are the wings, I want to give them a faint glow as well. Using the outer glow and just a small radius and a very low opacity. This way the look matches the rest of the body. Lastly, I add a transparent gradient to the wings, adjust it for both of the wings, and that is the first critter done. Now it's time for some variations. Take the first design and quickly turn it into something similar yet different. This to me is the biggest advantage of working with vectors. You have everything in place. All you need to do is change it, move it, rotate it, scale it, skew it, recolor it. It's already there. All you have to do is reuse it. To give this bug a forward motion, I move the legs to the back. With four legs pointing backwards and two pointing forward, it looks different. I duplicate this one again, change the wings and alter the eyes and the legs. And that's the stage where I spot something that I should have done in the first place. Turn the scale with object on for my effects. Now the little bug has the same glow 
as the bigger ones. I need to change that to make it fit and not look out of proportion. I alter the radius, turn the scaling on for all the objects with effects. As an added visual effect, I add a Gaussian blur to the whole group for this critter. I'm trying to create something like a depth of field where only the two bugs in the very front are sharp and all the others further back, including the clouds, are blurry and semi-transparent. I should have fixed the base object first now I duplicate it and it does not have the scaling on. I move it further back, blur it and add a few more bugs to the scene. And that's it. A few glowy bugs using the outer glow and the outer shadow made with some deformed circles, the pen tool and some gradients. As usual, this is just a tutorial to show you what can be done. The options are endless. These two samples work with the same techniques, simple shapes and the glow effect for some of the elements. Play with it and make your illustrations shine. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a comment in the section below and I will see you again soon.